Hello everyone and welcome to the 2021 election recap on Let's Talk Elections. In this time we will go through five major political events for every month of 2021 in a speedily fashion. There may be some significant events missing, but I tried to prioritize the most important events of each month. I may have missed some substantial political events and I do apologize, but I tried my hardest to ensure everything relevant was included. Also, some of the days might be slightly off as certain things happened overnight or were leaked from sources but released in a statement a few days later. However, the date should be within reasonable accuracy. In each month, there will be three trackers on the right side of the screen, Joe Biden approval, generic ballot numbers, and COVID-19 cases. All of the numbers are taken from the final day of each month, and keep that in mind. So without further ado, let's begin with the month of January. In the month of January, on January 3rd, Nancy Pelosi was re-elected as Speaker of the House of Representatives. On the 5th, Democrats won both Georgia Senate seats, flipping them from the Republican Party. On January 6th, the Capitol was stormed. There was an insurrection, and it was one of the most major political events in the past 20 years. On January 13th, Donald Trump was impeached again for the second time. On January 20th, Joe Biden was inaugurated as the 46th president of the United States of America. Joe Biden soared high in terms of his approval. There was no data in the generic ballot, and we were about 150,000 COVID cases per day at this point in time. Moving into the month of February, on February 1st, Nancy Pelosi and Chuck Schumer worked together to move to introduce the $1.9 trillion COVID-19 stimulus bill. On February 4th, Representative Marjorie Taylor Greene of Georgia's 14th District was removed from all committee assignments. On February 9th, Donald Trump's second impeachment trial began in the United States Senate. And on February 13th, Donald Trump was acquitted by a vote of 57 to 43, with 67 needed to convict. 50 Democrats voted to convict President Trump, and seven Republicans joined as well. And in middle of February, the Texas power crisis occurred as a result of snowstorms that took the, the state by a storm. And the Biden approval rating remains pretty steady at plus 16. The generic ballot puts the Democratic Party ahead by six points, and the COVID metrics and the COVID cases per day seem to have cut in half in the month of February. In the month of March, on March 3rd, uh, the House passed the George Floyd Policing Act and the For the People Act. On March 6th, the COVID-19 stimulus package passed by a vote of 50 to 49 through budget reconciliation, with the only absent senator being Dan Sullivan from the state of Alaska. On March 10th, Joe Biden saw a number of major confirmations in the United States Senate. And then on March 30th, the state of Kentucky changed the Senate line of succession rules in the anticipation or possibility of Mitch McConnell's retirement with a Democratic governor in that state. And on March 31st, New York State, as the fourth largest state in the union, legalized recreational marijuana usage. Joe Biden continues high, Democrats remain at plus six, and we're about 64,000 COVID cases per day. In the month of April, on April 14th, President Biden said America will withdraw all troops from Afghanistan by 9-11, something that sticks with him throughout the remainder of the year. On April 16th, the United States administers over 200 million doses of COVID-19 vaccines, smashing President Biden's previous record of 100 million doses administered. On April 22nd, Washington, D.C. statehood passes the House of Representatives in a big win uh, for the potential 51st state. On April 26th, the new 2024 electoral map was released to the public and will be utilized through 2030. In April 28th, the California Secretary of State confirmed that Gavin Newsom will in fact face a recall election later that year and will be facing the voters yet again despite winning his first election back in 2018. Joe Biden remains at about plus 12.5% nationwide. The generic ballot dips a little bit for the Democratic Party, now only ahead by four points nationwide, and we're about 52,000 COVID cases per day in the month of April. In the month of May, on May 1st, the Democratic Party was locked out of the Texas 6th District special election, uh, one that the Democratic Party thought they might have a chance in, ultimately had no chance as there was no Democratic nominee on the runoff ballot. On May 12th, Representative Liz Cheney of Wyoming, a very top name within the GOP, was ousted from her leadership position by the House Republican Party. She ranked as the third highest ranking member in the GOP in the House of Representatives, ultimately pushed out of her position for her stances against President Trump. On May 14th, the former, uh, a number of former high-ranking GOP members threatened to leave the Republican Party out of its uh, unwillingness to move away from President Trump's agenda. 
On May 22nd, the Georgia Republicans move to their fourth recount of the 2020 election results within certain counties. And on May 28th, the January 6th commission to investigate the Capitol insurrection that occurred uh, months prior failed after receiving just very few GOP support in the United States Senate. Joe Biden remains very even with his approval rating at plus 12.8 percent. The Democrats actually tick up very narrowly to plus 5.6 percent nationwide. And we have dipped to a very low point of 18,000 COVID-19 cases per day in the month of May. In June, on June 1st, the Democratic Party outperformed their 2018 and 2020 victories in the New Mexico special election in the first congressional district. On June 17th, Joe Biden's net approval hit single digits for the first time ever during his entire presidency. On June 19th, Donald Trump endorsed a primary challenger to Senator Lisa Murkowski of the state of Alaska. And on June 24th, the California recall election for Gavin Newsom was officially underway and campaigning ended up going into full force. On June 30th, Donald Trump announces on Fox News to Sean Hannity that he has made up his mind on 2024, but will not reveal that decision. And the Biden approval rating dipping down to single digits at plus 9.9% nationwide and the generic ballot remaining for Democrats at about plus 5%, 4.9% to be exact. And the COVID-19 metrics hit a low point of 12,900 cases per day. In the month of July, on July 6th, Eric Adams won the New York City mayoral primary and then went on to win the general election in November. On July 13th, Texas Democrats walk out of the state house and actually leave the state to block a voter suppression bill and a number of other things that were called in the special session. In, on July 15th, House Republicans shatter their previous fundraising records as 2022 seems to be shaping up to be a red wave year. On July 29th, Trump endorsed Republican loses a contested GOP House primary in that hotly contested Texas 6th district. The Republican that won the primary ultimately, of course, went on to win that race. On the 31st, Donald Trump reveals he has raised over $100 million ahead of the 2022 midterm elections, giving the Republican Party a boosted war chest with Donald Trump added in. Joe Biden dips down to a lower point in approval, with the net approval being plus 8.1% nationwide, the generic ballot putting the Democrats ahead by 4.8% nationwide, and the COVID-19 cases surge across the nation to 78,006 cases per day. In the month of August, August 4th, centrist Chantel Brown wins the contested Ohio 11th District Democratic primary against Nina Turner. She goes on to win the general election later that November. On August 10th, Governor Andrew Cuomo of the state of New York resigns from office amidst a number of allegations against him. In the middle of August, Afghanistan's withdrawal becomes a mainstream issue for America and proves to be detrimental to Joe Biden and his administration. On August 26th, the Virginia Democrats outperform Joe Biden in a sudden surge of support as new polls seem to put them ahead further despite Joe Biden falling in approval. And on August 29th, Wisconsin Republicans aim to investigate the 2020 election and relitigate an election that has already been certified by the state itself. The Biden approval rating dips into the negative for the first time ever. The net approval is disapproved plus 0.6%. And the generic ballot dips for Democrats as well, with them being ahead by a mere 3.4% nationwide very similar to how much they won by back in the 2020 election, and the COVID-19 metrics double to 162,000 cases per day in the month of August. In the month of September, on September 6th, Donald Trump visits Iowa and holds rallies to seemingly prepare for the 2024 presidential election. A lot of anticipation there. On September 14th, Gavin Newsom, surprisingly enough, wins his recall election in a landslide, despite Joe Biden being disapproved of and Kamala Harris and Joe Biden campaigning on behalf of him. Many people expected decreased turnout as a result of that. On September 18th, voting begins in Virginia's gubernatorial race, a very hotly contested race and probably the most contentious of the election cycle in 2021. On September 26th, the GOP audit actually reveals that Joe Biden won by a larger margin than previously anticipated and calculated in the state of Arizona, proving yet again that Joe Biden did win the state of Arizona. On September 30th, census data from the 2020 uh, census year was officially available for the purpose of redistricting. And Joe Biden's approval rating moves down into an even worse point at disapproved plus 3.8%, taking the advantage nationwide. In the generic ballot, Democrats dip to plus 3.3% nationwide. And COVID-19 metrics don't seem to look too much better for the American public at 111,000 cases per day in the month of September.
In the month of October, in early October, key swing states uh, number reveals that major dips in Democratic registration seems to have been happening across a bunch of states. A lot of the key states for 2022, Democrats are starting to see many people actually leave their party and move either to the Republicans or identify as an independent. In mid-October, there was fully swung gerrymandering uh, across a number of large states, most importantly, Texas and Illinois. On October 20th, Joe Manchin calls rumors of him switching political parties BS, ultimately indicating that he has no intention at all of switching parties from Democrat to Republican. On October 23rd, Joe Biden falls to a new low of approval nationwide, the lowest point of his presidency at that point in time. And on October 28th, Republicans experience a last minute surge in Virginia and New Jersey as Joe Biden's approval rating seems to skyrocket or plummet actually is the better word for it across the nation. As you can see, the Biden approval rating now is disapproved plus 8.2% in terms of the net approval nationwide. The generic ballot dips a point again for Democrats with them only being ahead by 2.5%. And the COVID-19 metrics seemingly better than the month of September at 71,000 cases per day at this point in time. And in the month of November, on November 2nd, Governor Phil Murphy of New Jersey wins re-election as the first Democrat to do so in decades, a long time coming for Democrats in New Jersey. However, in the same day, in the same election, Republican Glenn Youngkin wins the Virginia gubernatorial race against the former Democratic Governor Terry McAuliffe, who interestingly enough actually survived uh, what was expected to be a red wave in 2013 when President Obama was re-elected. Democrats won the governorship in the state of Virginia, ultimately was unable to do that in 2021. On November 8th, the House of Representatives passes Joe Biden's $1 trillion infrastructure bill in a major victory for Joe Biden. On November 16th, Republicans take the lead in the generic ballot for the first time since 2016, five years coming. And in the end of November, multiple states reveal extreme partisan gerrymanders putting the country at a worse position in terms of political representation and potentially participation. As you can see, the approval rating for Joe Biden does not fluctuate month from the month of October. And in the generic ballot, Republicans now take the lead at plus 0.7% nationwide. And the COVID-19 metrics, a bit worse than where they were the month prior at 83,000 cases per day. And in the month of December, there was the December 1st Supreme Court uh, in which they have decided that they will hear arguments in the Mississippi abortion case rather than dismissing it entirely, citing Roe v. Wade. On December 20th, Representative Stephanie Murphy of the state of Florida is choosing to retire, marking the 21st Democratic retirement. On December 28th, more than 50% of all states finalized their brand new maps through 2032. On December 30th, we saw the largest number of COVID-19 cases recorded in a single day in the United States. And on December 31st, 62% of the entire United States population is fully vaccinated, including all of those eligible or ineligible nationwide. And the approval rating does not change much for Biden, holding steady at disapproved plus 8%. In the generic ballot, also holding steady, Republicans maintain a lead of 0.8%. And as you saw on December 30th, we now experience the largest day of COVID-19 cases with 344,000 cases of COVID-19 per day at the end of the month of December. So, that's the recap. Thank you guys so much for such an amazing year. Going from the Georgia runoff elections in the beginning of the year on January 5th, live streaming that for you guys, to the Virginia governor's race and also live streaming that for you guys, it has been such a wild ride. I'm hoping 2022 enters a lot smoother and is a lot better year than the past few, but that's just a hopeful uh, thinking there. Uh, this upcoming midterm election cycle is likely to be very interesting, so if you haven't already, please subscribe to this channel uh, for many updates. If you all like this style of the video and you want to let me know, please do. I'm back home from college, so I'll be able to make a lot more videos for you guys. Thank you guys once again for watching. I mean, uh, this has been such a wild ride over the past year, and while it is a year that typically there isn't much in terms of uh, political news and uh, the, the political news cycle altogether. I think we've made a very good uh, community here and really been able to cover everything that we could have. And I think that the next year obviously will be a lot more important and a lot bigger things happening. 
but there was definitely uh, a good amount of things to cover and I'm really happy you guys were here uh, along the ride with me. And here are my main sources if you're wondering where I got a lot of these numbers from. I use sources ranging from Real Clear Politics to 538 and don't tell any of my professors this but I used Wikipedia as a source. They of course cite their own sources so I think it's pretty fair for me to use that one altogether just to get a bit of an idea of what was happening each month and then the rest I actually used from a bunch of different news sources. So I think that's just where a lot of this came from. Again I'm sorry if I missed any major political events. I might have made a big mess up and completely missed one altogether together and I do apologize if I did that uh, I hope so I hope that I did not because I really put a lot of effort into this video but of course mistakes can be made because this is a human endeavor and human uh, humans are bound to make mistakes sometimes so thank you guys so much for watching this video make sure to comment down suggestions for future videos subscribe on the left if you haven't already if you would like to uh, make sure to follow on Instagram and Twitter that is on the left side of the screen there's also a discord server for you to go ahead and join on the screen there's a video you can watch or not and then a playlist uh, that you can watch for 2022 election analysis videos as we enter into the new year. Happy New Year's Eve, everyone. I hope you guys have an amazing New Year's Eve celebration. Don't spend time away from your family watching these videos. I probably should have told you that in the beginning of the video, but make sure you get off the screen. Go ahead and spend time with whoever you're with or even by yourself. Celebrate the New Year. I hope that it's not the New Year. I hope you're not watching this from the UK because then I've already passed it and there was no point in this video altogether. But Happy New Year, everyone, and I hope you guys have an amazing rest of your holiday season, and I hope to see you guys next year.